Not one of them falls to the ground apart from his father's will. Not one of those little sparrows who aren't worth a lot. There's millions of them, but not one of them falls to the ground apart from the father's will. Let that sink in. Lord God, you know. Welcome to New Life. I'm Terry Knight, the pastor here at New Life Community Church, and I thank you so much for turning us on, tuning us in. I trust, as always, that the Lord's going to bless you up one side and down the other as we fellowship together here for the next several moments. I want to begin tonight by saying it's really been a very difficult time here in this area, here in our community over the last week or so with uh, some of the things that have been taking place with some folks that we know and love and care about very deeply. Seems like we hear bad news in this area way too often. And this seemed like a very fitting time to share with you a message that we spoke at New Life several weeks ago or a teaching. It deals with the issue of God taking care of us. Man, I'm telling you, it's good to hear these things from time to time, to understand that God does love us, He does care for us, even when it seems like the world is upside down, which it pretty much is. And things are just going backward and bad news after bad news after bad news. The Bible, the Word of God, contains good news. And I trust that we'll be lifted up from some of the heaviness and some of the burden as we listen to this teaching. We've got so many received a lot of very positive comments from some of you over the past week about some of the ministry that we've been able to engage here in the community. Please know that we appreciate that, and I never take for granted the opportunities that we have. We talk to people at New Life all the time about divine appointments, divine appointments. I believe God provides those for those who look to Him and live after Him and attempt to follow after Jesus in their day-to-day -day routine. What a privilege it is to be able to serve the Lord in any capacity. Well, I'm going to go to Luke chapter 12 for our text passage, this particular teaching that we've titled, God Will Take Care of You. And I want to read just a couple of verses in your hearing. And I invite you to, to look as I read. Luke chapter 12, beginning in verse 6, the Bible says, Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is forgotten by God. Indeed, the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Don't be afraid. You're worth more than many sparrows. Beloved, that's the Word of God, and I trust that you will be encouraged by it tonight as we share with you this teaching. God will take care of you. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for every person that's turned on this telecast tonight. I pray specifically for those that, that have been surrounded by some bad things this week, some trials, some tribulations, even tragedies, as we've heard so much of tragic news in the last week or so. Lord, here in our own backyard, I just pray and ask that you would lift us up out of that by the power of the Spirit and help us to know tonight that you do love us, that you care about us, that you're a merciful God that has a wonderful plan for our life if we will follow you. So Lord, add your blessings to this, we pray and ask in Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Well, let me just say one thing before we get into this tonight. Uh, we were having some difficulty with our air conditioning at New Life on the Sunday morning that we delivered this particular teaching. And I may make mention of that, and uh, you may not even know what's going on. It seemed to be so, somewhat comical, but I just wanted to warn you of that ahead of time. You be blessed. I'll be back here in just a few moments to wrap things up. I want to share with you, first of all, a little known fact about Pastor Terry. You ready for this? I am a bird watcher. I admit it. I am a bird watcher. I love birds. I think that's the coolest little creature God ever made, and I'm really looking forward to getting to heaven. 
I, I believe when we get there that we're going to have experiences like this, although the birds will not have come from a taxidermist, but uh, we'll be alive and we can just play with the little birds and tell, hey, little bird, how you doing? They'll talk. But I just believe we're going to be able to play with the little birds. You can't do that now because they'll cut and run. Uh, but yeah, I love birds. I love bird stories. Do you like bird stories? Like one I heard. <laughs> this scraggly looking fellow went into a, something like a seed store or a, a farm supply store. And I mean, this guy, he looked rough. But he walked in and, and the guy behind the counter says, uh, says, yes, sir, may I help you? He said, yeah, give me some bird seed. And the man behind the counter says, young man, that is not the way you ask for something here. The proper way would be, Mister, may I have some bird seed, please? Now you go home, work on that. You come back tomorrow. If you get it right, I would be glad to sell you some bird seed, sir. Sure enough, the guy left. Next day he comes back in, walks in. The guy says, says young man, may I help you? And once again, he says, yeah, give me some bird seed. He's like, young, I told you yesterday. The proper way to ask for that is, Mr., may I have some bird seed, please? Go home, work on that, come back tomorrow if you get it right. I would be glad to sell you some of our bird seed. Sure enough, the guy left. Comes back the next day. The clerk recognizes him, thinking, well, surely he's going to get it right this time. So he says, young man, may I help you? In which he replied, dude, you want to buy a dead bird? That's funny right there. I don't care who you are. <laughs> I love bird stories. Just last week, we had to sacrifice with our grandbabies down at North Topsail Island, which is a rather desolate place. And among a number of other things, you could get pretty close to the seagulls down there. And that's just a, a really a neat animal. It, it seems like to me they're more wing than anything, but it's amazing to me how you get relatively close to them and they just, just leap up, just like that. Come on, stand up and try that with me. No, I'm just kidding. But they just kind of leap up and flop those big old wings and they just get carried off by the wind. It just kind of reminded me of the Holy Spirit. And I just just amazed by that. I just would stand there sometimes. People would be looking at me thinking, he is amazed right now. I love birds. My lovely wife has provided our humble abode with a plethora, that means a whole gob, of hummingbird feeders. Now that is a remarkable little creature. Any of you into hummingbirds? You have hummingbird feeders at your house? If you don't have one, I would encourage you to invest five bucks, get you a hummingbird feeder and hang it up. It is just, that's just the coolest little creature ever. They zoom in and they zoom out and they flit about and it's just, uh, it, it's just an unmistakable manner. I came out of my house a couple of years ago and was headed to my truck and I heard something. Urgh. I thought it sounded like a bumblebee. It really didn't sound like, Urgh. it sounded more like a giant bumblebee. And I stopped and this hummingbird got right in my face. It looked like a cartoon with his little beady eyes looking at me. And seriously, the little rascal went beep beep and took off like the road runner. I didn't know they beat, but they do beat. Well, let me tell you my latest hummingbird story. Uh, there's a method to this madness. Stick with me. For Father's Day, my lovely wife and maybe even my children contributed to this. It was just my lovely wife. Uh, not that she's seeking any glory or fame from this, but uh, just my lovely wife had purchased for me my very own personal greenhouse. The thing's about seven foot tall, four foot wide, and two foot deep, my own little greenhouse. So I started, bought some peat pellets, started me a flower industry. I'm going to be like Flower Dynasty one of these days. Probably have my own reality television program. Anywho, uh, just a few days ago, I came home and I went out to check on my peat pellets. And lo and behold... There was something sitting in the greenhouse on my peat pellets. And it was a hummingbird. Just sitting there. I mean, most of the time, they yip, yip, yip all over the place. He was just sitting there. And I'm like, hark! There's a hummingbird just sitting there. Like he was taking a nap. And I got a little closer. He didn't move a little closer. I realized that the little bugger had got inside that greenhouse and where he normally flew off to his nest. There's now this clear plastic wall there. And apparently he got trapped in there. And, and he was... As my mom used to say, he was tarred. He was wore out. I tried to get him out. I flopped my arms every way you can imagine. He just kept flying into the walls. I'm like, man, this, this hummingbird must be from up north. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. He's flying. 
fly all over. I finally got on the, the right side of him, and he flew out the door, and, and he was all. And I guess you could say that I am now kind of like uh, somewhat of a local hero in that I saved the little hummingbird. Are you with me? I should get on cable 18 for that. Well, I told you all that to tell you this. Believe it or not, that reminds me of this story in Luke, all these little bird stories. Going back to Luke chapter 12, verse 6 in particular, 6 and 7, which happens to be in red. And what does that mean? It's Jesus is speaking. When Jesus is speaking, this is important, very important. Verse 6, he says, Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is forgotten of God or by God. Verse 7, Indeed, the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. The Bible is replete with stories about little birds like this. In fact, I went, went through and counted fowls as mentioned like 85 times in the Bible. Bird or birds, the plural, some 53 times mentioned in the Scripture. Not to mention actual names of birds, but that's a lot. The sparrow is the name. This, I think this is number one on your notes, and I forgot to transfer the study notes to my notes today, so um, the clicker girl has it when it appears on the screen. If you'll kind of look at me bug-eyed, I'll know that we're at a study note. Let's practice that one time. You ready? There you go. Number one, sparrow is the name given to several different species of birds in the Bible. These little birds, very similar to these, ate grain. They ate bugs, and they gathered together these noisy little flocks. Sounds a whole lot like new life, doesn't it? We eat grain and bugs, and, and we're noisy. But <laughs> Sparrows would often build these untidy nests in the eaves of houses way back then. And get this, and I think this is incredibly interesting. They would actually, they weren't driven away when they would build their nest in the temple, the temple of God. Isn't that incredible? Listen to the psalmist, chapter 84, verse 3. Even the sparrow has found a home. He says later, a place near your altar. Lord Almighty, my King. And my God, these little sparrows have a place near the altar of God. God cares. We, we understand from the Bible that those who were poor and could not afford uh, to sacrifice a sheep or a goat, and you can imagine that that could get expensive, but they were allowed to bring a sparrow to the temple. If they couldn't afford the big thing, they could bring the smaller thing. And by the way, the, the size, the price of the sacrifice wasn't the point. The point was being in obedience to God. That's still true today. Are you with me? At least one source indicates that sparrows have been sold in the markets of the Middle East as a food item. Don't worry, little birds. We aren't going to eat you. But can you imagine? They were plucked and spitten, put on a spit and kind of turned over and, and actually eaten like tiny little bird kebabs. <laughs> Seriously. As ridiculous as that sounds. These birds were so plentiful, their value is designated as being worth very little. In fact, two sparrows would sell for a single coin a very small value. And there's a lot of debate about what that coin was. That's irrelevant. And if they were bought in quantities of five they could be purchased for two coins of small value. I guess, <laughs> I guess you could compare the sparrows to the chicken nuggets of today as they appear on the dollar menu. Are you with me? I mean, I'm just saying. Sometimes, those little birds are cracking up. <laughs> Calm down, little birds. Sometimes it seems that God is the only one who cares about the little sparrows. How many of you know that cats and birds of prey like to hunt these little sparrows and eat them? And little boys have been known to torment them. Can I get an amen right there? Amen. Oh yeah, says Jeff Mitchum with great exuberance. 
Yeah, listen to what Jesus said. You can find this in Matthew's account. Matthew 10, Luke 12, same account coming from two, two different perspectives, two separate eyeballs, if you please. But Jesus said this through Matthew. Not one of them falls to the ground apart from his Father's will. Not one of those little sparrows who aren't worth a lot. There's millions of them, but not one of them falls to the ground apart from the Father's will. Let that sink in. It's interesting that Jesus chose the most common of all birds to teach a very profound truth, which ultimately isn't about birds at all. You see, and I think this may be a study note, is it? Yeah. In God's eyes. Somebody say God's eyes. Not my eyes or your eyes or someone else's eyes, but in God's eyes. And ultimately, this is what ultimately matters. In God's eyes, no one, not just the birds, but no one is insignificant. Let me see your eyeballs. Some of you come in here this morning feeling insignificant. You don't look it. Oh, you look very confident and secure. But I know how it is. Something going on in your life that maybe no one knows about. Maybe your spouse doesn't know about it. Only you know about it. And you come in here feeling kind of insignificant. Beloved, you should never leave place of worship where Jesus is magnified feeling insignificant because you are very significant to God and I want to help you understand that this morning you may not be to the world when you walk out of this place today the world may look at you and say oh there's that insignificant person but not God now the first part of our text passage as usual establishes the context, or that is to say, sets the scene for what's going on here. This actually, Luke 12, actually convenes back around chapter 10, where we find Jesus, we find who? We find Jesus commissioning and appointing, or appointing and commissioning, 72 of his followers to go out into the Harvest. Watch this. When I say harvest, I'm talking about the world that is lost. I'm talking about unconverted humanity. Jesus has appointed and commissioned 72 to go out into that harvest field, field and tell others about the kingdom of God. That event opens up a series of Jesus' teachings whereby He gives instructions to those who are accepting of God's plan. How many of you know there are two people, two kinds of people walking around on earth? Those who are accepting of God's plan or those who are not? And for those who are, He gives instruction, valuable instruction. Also, He engages, Jesus during this process, engages more than a few curious persons that range from the sympathetic right down to the antagonistic, a plight which continues right up to our present time. Those of you here this morning, you are either sympathetic with the plan of God or you are antagonistic to the plan of God or somewhere in between. Most people, if they are not sympathetic with the plan of God, they will tell you whether they're somewhere in between. It comes out sounding like this. Well, I know I'm not living like I ought to, but. Huh? And Pastor Terry is always thinking, well, if you know you aren't living like you ought to, but then why don't you start living like you ought to? Huh? Are you, <laughs> are you with me? He said as his gift of smart aleck surfaced for a brief moment. Now, this brings us to chapter 12. Are you with me? Chapter 12, which begins with a meanwhile. Sounds like an old episode of the Lone Ranger or something. Meanwhile, then we're told, the latter part of verse 1, check this out. A crowd of many thousands had gathered so that they were trampling on one another. All that is not only fascinating to me, it is exciting to me in the truest spiritual sense. You understand a crowd of thousands of people were gathering to hear Jesus teach. Watch this. There was no band. And I thank God for our band. There were no lights. There were no seats. There was no air conditioning. They just come out to hear Jesus Christ teach. 
thousands of them so that they were trampling on one another. Get out of my way. I want mean, to hear Jesus. Wow. Man alive, how many of you would like to be a part of something like that today where thousands of people were going to hear Jesus talked about? Any of you? That's what I figured. Listen, this is exciting. Jesus begins here first to warn His disciples about living like a hypocrite. And He says, don't y'all do that. Don't y'all do that. And then our Lord also warned them that persecution would accompany their walk with Him. You see that in verse 4 of chapter 12. Then He warns them about fearing other men or the persecution that He's talking about. Fearing other men who may indeed be able to kill them physically. But Jesus offers there's... That's really nothing to fear. Now watch this. He's saying there's people who can kill you physically, but that's not really something you should fear. I don't know about you. I don't know that I would say that I fear that, but it would cause me great concern if I thought someone was was trying to kill me. Amen? I don't even want someone to punch me. I don't even want strangers putting their hands on me. In fact, there are certain people, I don't even want them looking at me a certain way. Can you, can you dig what I'm saying? But Jesus says what they should fear is the fact that God has the power and the authority after physical death to throw them into, say it with me church, hell. Hell. Now there's a lot of lessons to learn here. But one is that there is something worse than physical death. Hear me, church. There's something worse than physical death. And that is spiritual separation from God for all eternity. By the way, I want to make clear to you this morning that hell isn't just a colloquialism for bad luck. We hear it all the time today. Man, this past week was hell. Check it out. No, it wasn't. The most worstest week you ever had was not hell. Are you with me? Hell is a terrible, awful place of destruction and damnation forever. Now, kind of built that up to say this to you. Immediately. In fact, it's about hot as... You know what is, can, you, can I get a testimony right there? Would some able-bodied usher please go to the thingy and bump it down just a little bit? Uh, if I'm hot up here, I can imagine what you're like. Would somebody please bump that down just a little bit? And if it don't work, wave at me and we're going to go down to Highland and finish the service. Say amen right there. <laughs> Lord help us. I, unless you thought that was a sermon illustration, I'm preaching on hell and I just got it hot in here on purpose. <laughs> I think I'll get a drink of water. Y'all look exhausted. Are you with me? You sure? Because that was the introduction. (laughs) I'm just kidding. And the air is gone, and I'm not going to put you through too much of that, but listen. Immediately on the heels of these stern warnings, Jesus offers this story about these tiny, somewhat insignificant little sparrows. Very much like those you see having a heat stroke up here right now. That's that's what they're doing right there. Now I want you to understand, Jesus has fielded a lot of questions about a lot of ungodly behavior. And by doing so, there's one, one of the things that we discover is this. We discover that there was ungodly behavior occurring then, and there's ungodly behavior occurring even today. You with me? So not only does Jesus give a warning about us participating in such things as hypocrisy, but He also offers to us words of comfort about His ability and His desire to protect and shield us from such as we purpose to walk in the light 
living out a lifestyle of holiness. Say amen. Do you hear that rushing mighty wind like the Spirit coming in? I'm inspired to preach on until about 12.30 now. Say hallelujah right there. That was not a very hearty hallelujah, I'll tell you that right now. Hey, listen, I want you to understand this. The hypocrites, the destroyers of the followers of Jesus, and they're out there. They pose a very real and significant danger to those who are determined to follow after Jesus. Let me do this another way. Beloved, we're going to wrap it up right there tonight. There's a little bit more to this teaching, but this will be a good place for me just to interject and try to wrap it up by saying this. You know, we come into this world with a problem, a sin problem, and if something doesn't transpire during our lifetime, we exit this world with a sin problem. Well, God has a wonderful plan for your life. It's a plan of redemption, of salvation, and God has purposed to provide that for you in this present existence through Jesus Christ, and it doesn't just stop in this present existence. It goes all through eternity. God has provided for you. God cares enough about you that he's provided for you in this present world, but he cares so much for you, he's also provided for you in the world to come. You see, this isn't all there is to it. And granted, all the trials, the tribulations, the tragedy that surrounds us today, even many believers, uh, many would say, hey, what's up with that? Why do bad things happen to good people? you got to understand, you need to understand this. This isn't all there is to it. This is just a, a preparation time for eternity. At best, this life is short. You may live 70 years, 80 years, a uh, gentleman that I pastored many years ago recently celebrated his 102nd birthday. That doesn't happen very often. Even so, in the light of eternity, forever, 102 years is a very brief, short period of time to make preparations. Hey, there's some bad things taking place in and around us today. That isn't good news. The good news is that God has provided to take us away from that for all eternity. Have you made preparations for eternity? Pastor Terry, how do I do that? It's just as simple as this Bible fact. Confess your sins. Repent of your sins. Open up your heart's door, the real you. Make a decision to open up your heart's door and ask Jesus to come in. Receive him into your life. Believe that he will do what he said he would do. Believe that God will do what he said he would do in his word. He will forgive us. As many as received him, to them gave he the right to become the sons of God. That is good news. Father, I pray for every person listening to this telecast tonight, in particular those who have never made things right with you. They've never invited you to come in to be the Lord and the Savior of their life. May tonight be the night when they confess their sins, repent of their sins, receive you, believe you, and receive you into their heart. We pray in Jesus' name. Hey, if you prayed a prayer similar to that, I encourage you to, to write us a letter, drop us a letter, give us a call, let us know about it. Share that good news. Share that good experience with other people, knowing that God cares for you and that God will take care of you. Well, I'm going to have to get out of here tonight. My time is just nearly completely gone. I do want to remind you that New Life Community Church meets each and every Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. If you are not connected with a body of Christ, you're not worshiping with God's people somewhere throughout the, the week, we'd encourage you to come and be a part of what's taking place here. I guarantee you, you will be lifted up. We also have midweek activities Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock. And I'm telling you, the Lord is moving. That time is growing. It's just really becoming a, a neat time, a special time of fellowship for the body of Christ. And we'd love for you to be a part of that. I am Terry Knight, the pastor of New Life Community Church. Thanks so much for listening in this morning. And remember, my friends, if you don't live it, you don't have it. Lord God.